Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to replace your spark plugs on the 3.5 liter V6 Toyota engine, the 2GR FE. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos, and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig in. So a small overview before we get started. This engine has iridium spark plugs, so the replacement interval is every 120,000 miles or 10 years, whichever comes first. This job for most DIY mechanics seems to be like a daunting task, a difficult one. However, I'm here to tell you that it's actually easy. After watching this video, you'll find out why, because if you know the right steps and what needs to come off and what doesn't, you're going to do this in no time and you'll be on your way saving a lot of money from having a professional like myself do this. You will need some parts other than the spark plugs themselves because we will pull the plenum out. You will need three gaskets. You will also need the throttle body gasket. Having said that, let's get to work. So the first step is to remove the cowl. The cowl is in the way, it's the upper piece and the lower piece. Some models like your 2006 to 2012 RAV4 V6, you do not need to remove this because you have enough room to get in the back. But most models, you're going to remove this, they all remove the same. Similar, not exactly the same, but I will give you all the info for the other models as we go. So the first thing in all models is you're going to want to remove the wipers, wiper arms. Always going to be a 14 millimeter nut. Some of them will have a cap, you pop the cap. In the case of the 2008 Highlander that we're working on today, it does not have the cap. So let me go ahead and remove the wiper arms. So when you remove the wiper arm, sometimes they get stuck. Here's a little trick for you. Where the joint is, put your hand like this and push it down and that'll release it. Don't push down with too much force where you, where you push the glass, but that'll release them. Push, pull your arm out, pull the other one out. Now, most of these cowls will have two clips, one here, one there. Some of them will have it in the front, some won't. So always look in this area, in the corners, for a clip. So let me pop the clips on this one, and then we'll continue. If these clips are missing, you can replace them. You can buy them from the dealership or any parts store. Now, we're gonna remove the top piece of the cowl. But first, before you do that, you're gonna have the attachment rubber seal on the side. You're gonna to wanna to disconnect that from the cowl before you pull it out, because then it'll just get pulled out. Now that we've got it this far, the cowl is still secured in place. If you look underneath here, you're gonna find a series of clips that you need to push in. In some cases, unfortunately, this is the first thing that I will tell you about bad mechanics, when they just rip this thing out and break all these clips doesn't make an issue because the hood pushes on this, but that's just not the right way to do it. You could just spend a few minutes, push these clips in, and then the whole cowl will pop out. That was not too hard. Now, you're gonna grab the cowl and pull it towards you. This cowl right here is clipped into the glass. So you're gonna hold it and pull it out like so. And I'll show you where it's clipped in. Do you see those clips, like this one right here? That goes underneath the glass to hold the cowl in place. So let's put, pull our cowl to the side. Now that the cowl is removed, I would like to make one caution. When we remove the bottom piece, you're working very close proximity to the glass. Be very careful, don't drop things on the glass, and you can easily damage the glass at this point, so be Pay special attention to that. The other thing I want you to pay special attention to is the models with an antenna. This antenna just goes inside the glass and that's where your radio antenna is. You're gonna be careful with these wires. Don't pull on them hard and I'll show you a trick as we go how to deal with them. Before we can remove the lower part of the cowl, we're gonna need to remove the wiper motor. Now, the wiper motor will have one wire and a few 10 millimeter bolts. This will always be the case in all of them, but the first thing we need to do 
This car has a antenna that goes through the glass. Here's the wire for that. By the way, this wire doesn't have the clip that usually goes here. That means this glass is aftermarket, which is not a problem, but just letting you know how you can catch that other than the label on the side. We're gonna disconnect this connector. So the best way to protect this wire is just fold it back on the glass, put a small piece of masking tape. Now it's out of your way. When we take this lower cowl, we're gonna be working close in this area. So this is out of your way now. Now we're gonna disconnect the connector on the Wiper motor, there's a few clips. You can see them right here for the harness because we're going to get this harness out of the way. Here's that one. Now that you got your harness out, pull it out of the way. Now we're going to remove the wiper motor. 10 millimeter bolts. Some will have three, some will have two, some will have four. It depends on your model, but this one has four. When you pull this wiper motor out, be very careful because it's very close to the glass. You pull it out with force and you hit this glass, it's cracked, and now the savings for doing this job yourself are all gone. So be careful when you pull it. Let's remove the cowl. Now in most models, you're gonna have a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts across. Some of them will have two of the three strut mount nuts on there as well, holding it down. So let's take them out and move on. Now that we've removed everything, we're going to just pull the towel up, being careful that it doesn't pop and hit the glass, because remember, the glass is very important to protect at this point. Go to the other side, pull it off, and then we're going to carefully walk it outside, and off she goes. Okay, now we have all the space open. Let's pull the engine cover off. We're going to remove the intake, including the in upper intake box and the hose going to the throttle body. So some of these models will have different hoses. We're going to start disconnecting the vacuum hoses. You can mark them if you want, but they only go one way. Just in cases like this little guy right here, try not to drop it because if you drop it, then it's going to throw you off. But for the most part, they only go one way. You can't really cross them. Most of this vacuum hose mess is for the active mount in the front if you have it. Then we're going to disconnect our PCV hose right here. Don't lose the clamp. We're going to unplug our mass airflow connector. Now, you have two styles. Some of them will have two bolts here. Some of them will have snap clips. Depends on the different model. The idea is, just like you replace your air filter, we're going to pull this housing off. Now, this one is missing the bolt right here. I will fix that off camera. Then you're going to undo the 10 millimeter here for the clamp. And, and folks, before we continue, I already see a problem here. Somebody's been here and this hose is routed incorrectly. See, this is, this is the kind of stuff that just drives me up a wall. Hoses need to be routed in the right place. Now this hose is pinched underneath the throttle body and it's actually supposed to go over and through this and to the purge valve. We'll fix that when we take it apart, but in your case, I hope your car, this is the first spark plug replacement, so it'll be running right here. You're gonna undo this clamp right here and pull the hose up. So let's uh, pull this and we'll fix that when we go back together. Now your air filter is right here. If, if you're replacing it, this would be a good time. We're not doing that to this car. Let's pull the throttle body out. So here's the first thing that I always see with the throttle bodies. People undo the coolant hoses and now you got a coolant mess, now you got to bleed the coolant. So here's something, all throttle bodies will have four bolts or will have two bolts and two nuts, depends on the style, but they're all very similar. We're going to remove those, but I want you to pay attention to one thing. There is a, on this bolt, there is a little bracket. When we go back together, let's remember to put that bracket. Then this bracket holds the wire for the throttle body. So let's take these four and take the throttle body out. Four bolts in this case, and we're gonna pull the throttle body. Now the cool thing is you can just lay it off to the side and leave it. It's not going anywhere, it's not gonna damage anything. We don't need to disconnect the coolant hoses. Let's pull the gasket, and that's the first gasket we're gonna replace. Now that we've removed that, let's see what happened with our hose here. 
Now our hose was supposed to go over and it went under, so it was slightly pinched here. Let's put this one to the side. So now we're gonna start working on the intake plenum. This intake plenum has a few bolts in the front, but the most ones that people struggle with are the ones in the back. So there's two 12 millimeters, one on this side, one on the other side. The reason you remove the throttle body the way we did is to get access to the first one, which is very easy. It's actually right here. As you can see in this video, it's super easy to get to. We're gonna get a ratcheting 12 millimeter wrench. We're gonna take it out. Here it goes. Let's move to the other side. So now comes the fun part, the part that most people get stuck on. Not removing this connector. You're gonna wanna remove this for the variable plenum. But the fun part is removing the bracket in the back. Now I will not even pretend to be able to film this where the bracket is exactly. It is an L-shaped bracket. One of the sides bolt directly to the plenum. One of the sides bolts to the top of the valve cover. Now I do have this picture when the engine was out of the car so you can see exactly what you're taking off that you can see here, that's the bolt we're gonna reach. But it is such an odd angle that the only way I found that you're gonna get to it is by using a 12 millimeter swivel socket. Now this is an impact swivel. You can use a regular swivel with an extension about this height. So we're gonna position it in there. Use my little light. And this goes perfectly on it. You can see the top of the socket of the extension right here. So let me let me break it loose. That's broken loose now. Now I'm gonna pull my my socket out. Also, by the way, guys, it really helps to have a locking extension here so this wouldn't go flying off. If you drop this or you drop the bolt, don't get frustrated. This is gonna happen with this. Until you've done a couple hundred of these, you're not gonna be as efficient with them, but it's not hard. You can get to it, you just need the right tools. And now I'm gonna get the rest of the bolt by hand. There it goes. I had to position myself in the front because the camera is standing where I usually work. So this has uh, made it a little bit more difficult, but here's the bolt. It's out, now let's pull the rest of them. Now we're gonna remove the last bolts for the plenum. There's two 10 millimeter nuts, one here, one there, and there's four five millimeter hex, just like this. So let me go ahead and remove those. You wanna remove the nuts first to even out the load because this is a plastic intake. So I'm gonna remove the outside ones first. I'm gonna get the bolts out with a magnet. Now before we remove the intake plenum, we're gonna disconnect our PCV line right here, like so, and then another line we're gonna disconnect is our purge line right here. Just like so, push it to the side. Now this is all nice and loose. Now when you pull this, there's one more line connected to it on the booster. You can leave it connected, just kinda swing the plenum out of your way, or you can just disconnect it. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it so I can show you guys the L bracket. Now, if you follow the video the way I, I have set it up, you're gonna pull the plenum up until it clears the stud, and then you're gonna pull it towards the front of the car. And the reason for that is you're trying to clear this bracket from underneath the harness. So folks, here's that L bracket. This is the bolt that we took out. You can take this bolt out instead. That's another way to do this, but for me, I always find it much easier just to take this one out and pull the whole bracket. And here's where the other bolt goes, right here. And here's your intake plenum, folks. Here are the three gaskets that we're gonna replace. Now, the minute you remove the plenum, you have open intake manifold. You need to cover this as soon as possible. If you drop anything in here, Saving yourself a few hundred bucks will turn into a big nightmare because this falls directly inside the engine and if the valve is open and something goes inside the cylinder, we have a much bigger problem. So the first thing, you're going to take a few shop towels, just cover the area. You can use, I don't like folks using paper towel and just jamming it in the holes. I don't like that. I've never liked that. That's just my preference. I always put shop towels or you can even use masking tape. Don't use uh, any kind of other tape to cover the holes because it leaves a residue. 
but masking tape does not. But for this job, to make it nice and simple, just use shop towels, cover the hole, have this PCV hose, which we're gonna talk about, hold it, and you're good. Now let's go ahead and replace the rear spark plugs. Okay, so we have the harness in our way right here. We're gonna wanna remove that or loosen it up a little bit so we can pull our coils out. So the first thing is, you're gonna remove the bolt on the side to free up the harness a little bit more. Then we're gonna remove this bolt. And... Folks, one thing I will mention about this wire configuration, not all of these V6s will be the same. Some of them will be much easier. This is one of the harder ones and I wanted to show you the harder one. Uh, the easier ones will, will just have less harness and harness will be out of your way where you can pull the coils and do everything without having to remove as much. Also gonna remove this last one over here. At this point, your harness is a little move, better movable, so you can maneuver it around the coils. Now let's disconnect our coils. And I showed you a trick in a previous video on how to disconnect these connectors. This is really going to work. I'll show you the video right here. Because of the access, if you get a 90 degree pick, it works really good to pull these connectors out. You're just going to pull the tab and pull the connector out. So now all our three coils are disconnected. Let's take the bolts for the coils. They're 10 millimeter. Now that the bolts are out and the connectors are out, you're gonna move this harness left and right until you can pull the coils out. And as always, when you pull the coil, make sure you pull the seal with it. I'll show you that seal once I get this one out. Here's that seal that I told you about. Don't forget this, if it stays on the cylinder head, pull it out and keep it with the coil. Pull the other two coils. Now this last coil, if you have this configuration of harness, you can't pull the harness far enough and the coil will just hit the harness as soon as you pull it out. If you have a hard time pulling the coil out, just get a screwdriver or just to put, release it from the spark plug. Now, if you have this harness configuration, it's gonna be a little bit hard. So reach in there and disconnect the cam sensor connector. That'll free up the harness. You see how free up? This is a connector that we disconnected. Don't forget to plug it back when we go back together. Pull the coil. It's a tight space, but it's nothing impossible. Here we go. Now, I'm using a 5H spark plug socket that is swivel. I will leave one in the description of this video where you can buy this. Now this is a snap-on one. I will not leave the link for this one because this one is too expensive for DIY, but I'll leave one similar. Now you're gonna want an extension, preferably locking. Let's take the first spark plug out. I'm gonna go behind the harness. And here's the first spark plug. Let's get the other two. Spark plug number two is out. Let's remove the last one in the back. Here's the last spark plug. Now I've discussed spark plugs on a previous video on the four cylinder, but this, if you can see it, this is a healthy spark plug. This is actually not an original spark plug. This has been replaced before. This car has a lot of miles, but if you have a spark plug, you're gonna find a mark right at the tip of the spark plug. That's how you know if they are original or have been replaced. Okay, so installation. When you install these spark plugs, do not put NICs, do not put anything on them. Make sure you get original spark plugs. That's what I recommend. If you wanna go aftermarket, that's up to you. However, the originals, you're replacing them every 120. I think it's not worth it going aftermarket. So let's go ahead and install these. Spark plugs, you always talk to specification. The torque specification for the 2GR FE engine is 13 foot pounds. That's across the board. So let, let me go install these three spark plugs and torque them and then we'll reassemble everything. Okay, now reinstall your coils. Folks, just like all the spark plug videos that I've done, the, the coil position doesn't matter. They're all the same. 
as long as you don't forget the seal. Make sure the seals are on there before you install these. Don't forget your connector that you took out for the cam sensor in the back. Plug it back in. Plug all your coils. Install the bolts for the coils. Tighten the bolts. Now let's reinstall our harness. This goes over the stud. This is here and that's there. Install the bolts. Tighten them up. Don't forget that bolt on the side if your car had that for the harness. And now you're going to want to double check all your work. Make sure all your coils are plugged in, any connectors you took out are plugged in, your harness is completely secured because now we're going to move towards putting the plenum back. Folks, before we continue, I want to bring your attention to this. This is the PCV hose. Not the PCV valve, not like the old V6 where the PCV valve used to be right there. But I want you to pay close attention to its location. Obviously it can't go here because that's where your plenum is going to bolt up. But don't put it all the way in the back. Make sure it goes right here. Right next, very close to the plenum. But between the dampener for the fuel rail and the edge of the intake manifold where the plenum is going to bolt up right there that is the correct spot for it because i've seen a lot of people that go like this and then it gets pinched and then you'll have serious problems with oil leaks so make sure this is right there i know it looks off and it looks wrong like where does this bolt to that's where it goes so make sure it's like that when you install the plenum and before you tighten your plenum down you're going to double check that so let's go ahead and prep our plenum. So here's our plenum. Let's take our three old gaskets. Install the new three ones. They only go one way, so nothing special about them. All three of them are the same. Do not, if you ever buy ones from the dealership, do not install black plenum gaskets. These are old. You should. Some dealerships will still sell them. Don't accept them. They should be orange like these. Now. Let's pull the towels out, very lightly clean the surface, make sure you're pushing away, not inside. If there's any dirt in there, you want the dirt to fall away, not into the cylinder, as much as possible. Now you're going to feed your manifold in. That L bracket goes in first, until you line it up like that. Now let's talk about the torque for the bolts. Hand install. Your bolts. Before tightening this manifold, you're going to want to start the bolts in the brackets. So let me go do that. Now this bolt on the back is going to be a little bit tricky to install. You're going to drop it a few times and that's okay. This takes a little bit of practice and doing this over and over to really be able to just do it from the first shot without dropping the bolt. You're going to drop it a few, you're going to move, put your hand in, feel the, the opening, and then just start it. You're going to keep trying left, right hand until you find the spot where you can put your hand through and you can have good control so you can start that bolt. Like for me, this is the approach angle and my face now is actually facing the back of the car. You're going to, as a DIY mechanic and professional mechanics, most of the time, we work with the feel, not by looking. You can't put your hand in this angle and your face in the same time. It's going to be very difficult. So let me start the other side. The other side is the same thing. You're going to reach in. Just start it. Don't tighten it at this point. Now we're going to tighten our plenum bolts. Now these are going to be for the bolts. You're going to have 13 foot pound and your torque spec for the small ones is 12 for the nuts. So let me tighten those and we'll continue. And you're gonna wanna start with the middle ones. So don't tighten the nuts first. And go in this crisscross pattern. Now after you've snug down, tightened down your uh, intake, go to the back, tighten your brackets. And guys, whatever you do when you tighten this one, 
do not over tighten it the one in the backs because if you're going to be the one taking this this apart again to do this job again you're going to be sorry if you over tighten this right now and if you're not doing it then be kind to the next mechanic we're going to use our same swivel socket and just start it on there don't forget your connector for the variable length intake by the way folks this is a pcv valve if you ever want to replace it this would be a good time to do that we're not doing this on this car so plug your pcv hose back in plug your purge line back in plug your va this vacuum line came off actually sure you track your vacuum lines when they fall i'm used to this but always you're going to have one vacuum line here the big big line for the pcb and then the little one for the purge valve that's so those are all the ho vacuum hoses you're going to have going to the plenum having said that let's go install our throttle body we're going to install our new gasket for the throttle body you're going to see this tab at the top make sure that goes in first install the bolts Folks, this would be a good opportunity to clean the throttle body. We're not going to clean it on this car because I was not requested with the job. But one thing I don't want you to forget when we're, do, when we're reinstalling the throttle body, which I always see forgotten. Sure, your bracket, this bracket right here, goes through the last bolt on the corner. And that bracket is connected to the wire for the throttle body. The throttle body torque spec is 7 foot-pound. Folks, Anything with plastic, you want to torque down if you're not used to the torque specs for them. One thing I want you to make sure not to forget is the purge line. And the best way I do this is just roll it over the throttle body from here so you wouldn't get it pinched like it was before on this car. Let's go and put our intake and move to the other side. Plug your mass airflow, all your vacuum hoses, and then Making sure this guy is free, I'm going to install it. Now this line is going to go actually all the way from this side and up and here and then lastly onto the purge valve. So that's uh, quite a difference from how it was run before. Last but not least, if you decided to remove the the hose for the the vacuum hose for the brake booster reinstall it folks i'm gonna pick this up and show you a few things at this point it's all done don't forget to tighten this clamp bolt on your your air filter housing you're gonna go over and double check everything the main things are you tighten these down your throttle body is tight and your intake is secure from here to the mass airflow. You do not want to introduce unmetered air because any of these gaskets, even if these gaskets rolled, usually you'll see the edges right here coming out. If you don't see them, you know that you forgot a gasket. If you don't see the top of the throttle body, you forgot that gasket, make sure your brackets in the back are done. Make sure all your hoses are routed the right way. If you're in doubt before you take it apart, take a picture. If you have any questions about these, and if you have a different model than this one, that something doesn't look right, leave a comment. I'm more than happy to help you with what I can. Now, having said that, we're gonna do the front three. Now, the front three should be very simple. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, connector, 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 and replace the three spark plugs. That is the hard side. I always want you to start with the back side because that is the hard side. This is child's play after you've done all that. So now I'm gonna swap these out real quick. We're gonna wrap up this video. So I'm gonna do this side. I'm gonna show you how it's actually done in an automotive shop. Let's install our cowl back on. 
One thing I will say about the installation of the cowl, you, do, you want the wheels on the ground when you install this. If you are, have the wheels over the ground and you install this, you could have noise. That's just the way they are. Make sure the wheels are on the ground when you install this and tighten it. So let's, let me go ahead and do that. Now let's install our wiper motor. Let's install the harness, get your antenna back, connect your wiper motor. Now let's install the upper part of the cowl. I want you to pay attention to this one. There's something that you need to know about this. Remember how we said I pulled it away from the glass? So you're gonna line it up and make sure it's tucked in the glass. So you're gonna start one side, then go to the other side and kinda work it in until it snaps, just like that. Push it in, like so. You're gonna line up your clips. So this, this is gonna move side to side. So you're gonna line up your clips, clip them all in. Same thing for the other side. There we go. Clip the apron covers back. Same on this side. Put your clips back. Last but not least is the wipers. So in this car, it's a little bit dirty, so I can see where the wipers go, because if you install this like this, we're gonna have a problem. So you're gonna wanna line it up where it used to be. Now, unfortunately, this glass is not original to this car. Toyota glass will have a black dot in the, so there's a blackened part right here where the wipers sit. If you look all the way at the end, you're gonna see a dot inside the black part. That's where the wipers line up when they're in the rest position. Just thought you guys would know that. And this one is kinda easy to tell because I can see where the wipers start and stop in the dirt. But in your case, if your car is clean, which I hope it is, because we are car care nuts, you're gonna see that black mark. If you don't see the black mark and your car is clean, you're gonna have to trial and error this until you get it right. Basically, you're gonna loosen it, change the position, tighten it, try it, turn the wipers on, make sure everything is working right, then you're all set. Tighten your wipers down. You're all set. Put your engine cover back. And that's one job completed. So folks, as you can see, this is not really a bad job at all. It just, it's just nuts and bolts and trying to figure out these tricks and ins and outs of where everything is. And that's the most time consuming thing. It's not really taking the nuts and bolts out. This is very simple, not really difficult. Double check everything. Make sure you do everything with calm. Don't rush things. Torque what needs to be torqued down. Make sure everything's tight and don't forget hoses. And the, you've seen this car was just brought to me to do this job and we found a hose that was misrouted because the spark plugs were done before. And that was likely when this happened, when the last spark plug replacement was. So take your time. It's not hard. Just now you know the ways and ins and outs of it. Take your time, get it done, and you're all set. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to help. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. My channel is dedicated to Toyota owners, DIY, information, everything that I can share with you guys from my experience. And until the next video, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.